In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I have a special guest. It is G League Ignite head coach Jason Hart. If you are watching on YouTube, you can see I am right outside the Dollar Loan Center where the Ignite and the Perth Wildcats will play their second matchup in the G League Fall Invitational tonight. But in this interview, me and Coach Hart sit down and we discuss his difficult role of balancing all the talent on this team and we went down each Ignite prospect and he shared his thoughts on them. Stay tuned. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL and Locked On. All right, in this episode, again, like I mentioned, had a sit down with Coach Jason Hart. Now, I've met Hart. Maybe I've seen him around twice, just at different events. The first time I met him was at the NBA Combine in 2022. And then we've become friends on social media. But if you watch this interview or when you watch it, you'll think that or, or listen to it. I can't forget my audience that's listening to the podcast. But you would think that we were tight. You would think that we were boys and we've known each other for a long time. But that just shows just the, the energy that he has and just how passionate he is about this Ignite team. You know, it, it was an off day. And you really don't get these type of candid, energetic interviews from coaches. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Jason Hart. I'm a big fan of what he's done with this Ignite program. The Ignite have put 10 guys, have had 10 guys drafted in three years of existence. And not only that, I think it should be more as far as first round picks. I still believe that the NBA teams do not fully know how to how to evaluate the Ignite players. We also we, we touched on that with, with Leonard Miller and Jaden Hardy also. I can go on and on, but here is my interview with G League Ignite head coach Jason Hart. All right, we're here at the Ignite practice. They just wrapped up. I'm sitting here with Coach Jason Hart. First of all, you got one of the toughest jobs this year. Right. And I know that you, you're up for the challenge. Yeah. When definitely. you helped bring in all of these talented players, what was your thought process behind trying to get these guys to mesh, but at the same time, make sure you, you win, but they also develop? That's, that's a lot going on. Well, first and foremost, rule number one, Ignite must develop. Like, right. So we do want to win, but the winning is developing so they can become NBA players, first and foremost. No, actually, how the players were accumulated this year, it just was by chance. Okay. So uh, Ron was going to Texas. Yep. Who was already done with recruiting. Um, we didn't know what was going on with the OT, OTE kids, mm -hmm. right? And so when those players became available and they wanted to come, we wasn't going to turn them down. Um, my job will be a little bit more difficult this year in terms of uh, – Divvying out the minutes, but over 50 games, going to have injuries. Um, it's going to always be opportunities to showcase. But to get drafted, you, know, you don't necessarily have to start. Yep. We played against Coolaby last year. From uh, He barely played. Come on. And with yep. the lottery pick. Yep. So these NBA scouts, they want to see potential and they want to see efficiency. Mm -hmm. and so just because you don't start, that don't mean you can't become a first-round pick. Now, I feel that the NBA teams still fully don't understand how to – Evaluate the ignite. Right, I feel that way too. Leonard Miller. Yeah. Sixteen and ten. Yeah. I was at the game at twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Second round pick. Yeah. Hardy averaged seventeen a game. I guess depending on which stats. Right. Counted that yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. Second round pick. That can't happen this year. Well, <laughs> it, it, it won't be an indictment on us. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I look at it like this, and I told Leonard, and you got, and I spoke to him. He'll be here tomorrow, actually. But I told him, you went thirty three. So everybody in front of you, you just got to produce and play better. And they got to hope that they was wrong about you. All right. So the pressure's not on you no more. It's on the NBA teams who passed you up. But don't look at it like that. I told them you got drafted 33. That's in the whole wide world. That's still really high. Yeah. They gave you guaranteed money. Now you got an opportunity. Now you just run with your opportunity. I wanted to touch on Leonard a little bit more. When I saw him at the, the combine the year before, he right. was kind of, I mean, he was raw. Right, super. He was really raw. Right. But I saw the flashes of being able to handle the ball, play a little bit of point. 
he comes to the Ignite, his role is totally different. Even though there were a couple games where he showed that, but he was dominant in his role, especially later on in the season. How did you get him to to, to buy in to play in a totally different role? I asked him what was his goals and his dreams. He said he wanted to go to the NBA. I said, all right, now if you get drafted to Golden State, you got to play this way. Yep. If you get drafted to Memphis, you got to play that way. Mm -hmm. And so he understood eventually, like, I got to learn how to be a part of a team as always trying to be the focal point. And once he did that, the offense came because he was playing team basketball. Yep. And so uh, he's one of the most talented players that I've ever coached. I coached a lot, Evan Mobley, Kevin Porter. Uh, Scoot Henderson, mm -hmm. him. So uh, Leonard Miller is definitely one of the most talented players. The one thing he's bringing to the NBA is he's an uh, elite-level rebounder. Yeah. And so that translates. Is there anybody on this team that that you think will have to play a, a totally different role than what they played prior to coming here? Each and every one of them, right? Okay. And I say that because whatever team they – go to, I'm pretty sure they're going to have a leading scorer already. Yep. He's going to have a point guard already. So you got to learn the space, cut, read, and do the NBA walks. You got to, don't crowd somebody when they you know, dribbling. Space. Turn down shot to get somebody a better shot. So I'm teaching them that now so when they get to the next level, they'll be ready to go. Alright, let's talk about Ron, Ron Holland. Yep. You mentioned Ron earlier. Kind of fell in your lap a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we recruited him early. He went to Texas. So we flew out there, our, our our Ignite fan, we went out there in October. Okay. And, uh, you know, he went to Texas. So we was recruiting him prior to. It wasn't just, it just, God bless us. But we did try to get him. People don't know that, but we did recruit him. Okay. So Ron is, you know, a, a guy that people are talking about could go as high as number one, two, top five pick. What is your goals for Ron this year? Well, my goals to him is just to get to understand the NBA game mm -hmm. and understand how your strengths fit that. And so, first and foremost, his, his biggest attribute to me is his competitiveness. Yep. He's ultra competitive, one at Duncanville, one at USA. So, he's a winner. Yep. So, that brings a chip. And then his defense, his, his lateral quickness is elite. And third is the potential because he's not overtrained. He wasn't an overtrained kid. So, whatever he learned now skill-wise, he's going to continue to get better and better. And then as he gets stronger and bigger and he's still growing, um, he got a chance to be very special. Now, when you say overtrained, are you referring to the guys that are just robots? All yeah. they did was train, yeah. train, train. No question. And ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that because you know I have a son. I did train, train, train. But I mean, he's still raw offensively, which yeah. is a good thing, yeah. right? Uh, Kawhi Leonard was when he came into the league. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, everything that he's getting now and implementing now is going to take his game further because he's not used to being on cones and doing all that. So this is kind of off subject, and yep, I know yep. when, when you grew up, yeah. you were hooping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine you didn't have yep. a trainer growing right. up in, in L.A. Uh -huh. So how do you balance the two? So what I did with my young young boys, we went to UCLA and yeah. got some good bump, right? We, we left the gym, we went to L.A. for 10 days, and I let them play every day at UCLA. Mm -hmm. And so that right there was skill development. We're, we're playing. Yep. And they went down there and they showed well. And so yesterday I wasn't surprised because I seen these dudes mm -hmm. in the gym three weeks ago playing against elite level pros. And I heard it was a learning experience because they were struggling to get on the main court. Right. And then they had to figure out how to get on the main court. And once they figured that part out, um, they was able to have success. Now when I saw Ron yesterday, and I've been watching Ron for years because I live in Dallas, I never accounted for how fast he is oh, and man. how it translates with space. You know, right. you seeing him in the high school gym where it's right. condensed. What are your thoughts about his, his quickness and his first step for I mean, Ron is a unique player. I don't even know what position you can see. He's just a ball player. That, and that's what the NBA is looking for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we and I t tell our players, man, stop worrying about numbers. Just trying to worry about getting in the game and get mm -hmm. some time, right? Yeah. But Ron is, is, is has a burst and quick step like Scoop. Yeah. So that's that stuff you can't train. That was God giving those guys that. But yeah. in space, um, He's super, super fast. And so when he get there, now you got to learn how to make the decision. Either score or pass, and I think he's going to continue to get better. But he's, man, he's super fast. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I knew he's fast, but just seeing it in person with, space. with space. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be The little play we ran for him is I knew he was, what he was going to do. And so, uh, yeah, he's super fast. All right, let's talk about Matas. He's, he's, he's waving to you. Yeah. Six, what is he, 6'10"? Matas got measured at like 6'10". Obviously, the paper shoes, 6'10", a little over 6'10". 
I mean, such a unique prospect. He can shoot. He can pass. I like how you gave him some reps on ball. Yeah. Is that part of your plan this year, to give him some reps on the ball? I always try to give these guys uh, some of their high school work and love, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because they yeah. all had the ball in their hand. But you, he could have the ball as much as he wanted if he rebound. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Leonard yeah. wanted to so rebound, and you touch him more, yeah. right? And so um, that's part of the learning process. One thing I get better at is rebounding. I want the ball in his hand because he makes good decisions. He's unselfish. And so if he rebound, you'll see the ball in his hand more. So we know he can shoot. Right. And I think his passing is underrated. Yep. Um, yesterday he showed that he can attack a closeout. That's what we're working on, man. You got He's too athletic and too tall just to settle. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get him to, to turn them shoulders and face the rim and go try to run and, and, and take off on somebody. I actually heard you say that in, in, in the, the part of practice I was able to watch yeah. where you mentioned, I guess on a catch, yeah. just work with him in the corner. Man, go. Go. You're too big. And normally mm -hmm. it's going to be like a bigger guy guarding you and you got some quickness, so challenge him and see. What is your, your game plan for him this season as far as helping him maximize his, his limitless potential? Yeah, well, defensively, man. I, his, my goal for him is – when those NBA scouts see him play, that you're going to compete defensively. Mm -hmm. And reason being, people are going to try to pick on you and go at you because they see the body. But we want to implement him, become defensive-minded, and taking on challenges because when he do get drafted, he going to have nightmares to, to guard every yeah. night. How hard is that for a guy that's so gifted offensively that didn't have to really defend on the high school level? I mean, he blocked a lot of shots in yeah. high school, but yeah. how, how hard is it to try to tell someone that's, like I said, so gifted to lock in on the defensive end? Actually, it's not hard because they all want to become number one pick. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy sell. Like, they're yeah. chasing the dream, and how you get to that dream, you got to do A, B, C, D, E, F. So for me, it's easy. Um, they're goal-driven. And that's just another test that they got to overcome and try to conquer. The NFL season kicks off tonight, and there are some incredible offers from FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. Right now, if you are a new customer, you can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all new customers who bet $5 will get $100 off the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So the time is now. Sign up for FanDuel. The app is very simple. It's easy to use. And you can bet on everything from the point spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer that you will not want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL and locked on. All right, Ethan. Yeah. Great international career. No question. And I'll be honest, I, I watch a lot of film. I had some concerns no because question. I can't put him in the box in a sense. Because yep. you can say he's not a five, not strong enough to be a five. Mm -hmm. Doesn't space it to be a four. And then, but I saw the international stuff, and I saw like how in Spain they always knew how to get him the ball in his spots. And I wondered how would he adjust to playing in the G League where he may get bumped around. And then yesterday, after watching him play, it was like, you know what, you can't overanalyze it. Just put him on the floor and let him do what he does. So his NBA comp, Luis Scola, Andrew, Anderson, Varejao. I have a new one. Who's that? Joakim Noah. Cool. So he's going to be able to space. Probably in Spain they didn't allow him to shoot. Mm -hmm. I'm encouraging him to shoot yep. three, uh, top of the key three-pointers um, when he's open. But he's a basketball player with a high IQ at 18 years old, and he's taller than – um, who is he taller than? Tyler Smith. So he's pushing like 6'11". Yep. So he can play the five. You know why? He's not going to stay 18 forever. Yeah, he's going to get stronger. No question. Yeah. And so he's going to be able to play five, and my goal is to have him be able to switch one through five. That's what the NBA want to see. Can he move his feet? Yep. Yeah, I just saw like the rebounding, like some of his stats or what he does doesn't show up in the stats, like the tip outs, the extra possessions. One of the reasons why he reminds me of Noah is that even when he gets the ball, he's always looking to make a play, whether it's a dribble handoff, whether it's driving and kicking. And one year, I think Noah was like, I think it was 13, 14. He was top five in MVP when they ran the offense through him. I saw that last night as a guy that you can give the ball to at the high post and he can find the cutters. When you, when you guys were recruiting him, what was your vision for him? Well, he's a, like a point center. You know, in, in, in Europe, they, they learn. Everything. Yeah, they share the basketball, right? Yeah. And so we ran this offense last year with Mika. Mika had a couple triple-doubles. So 
for me and him is just showing that he can handle the ball out in front of the defense without being uh, nervous. Mm -hmm. And I'm maximizing his skill set. Like you said, dribble weaves, faking it, passing it. Uh, it makes him feel good, and, and that helps our team. What do you think about his touch? His touch is different. It's it's not traditional. It's like a – He got a sky hook. But he it's not even a sky. It's like a – But he got a sky hook. Yeah. He haven't, she haven't showed it yet. He got a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He has really good touch, and obviously over there, he was whoever developed him and, and, and trained him and coached him did a really good job. Mm -hmm. I'm just benefiting off the work that they did, OT included. Yep. You know, OT uh, produced some high-level basketball players. It's a misconception that – you guys we, are rivals. No, nah, hell yeah. no, nah, man. We want these kids to get to the their dreams. And so I'm saying that OTE, y'all doing a hell of a job. Never no slight from me. Um, we got three of their guys, two of their guys. I mean, we got, it was three that played yesterday. We got three played yesterday, and all of them look like first round picks to me. No, without a question. I thought last night was a win for OTE. No question. It was on a, a big stage. Their three guys all played well, double figures. Whatever concerns or questions people had, should have been quieted, which leads to my next question. Tyler well, it should have been quieted when they when they watched the Twins. Well, you know, people thought that was luck. They thought that was luck. How when every NBA development. team had them in the top five for a year straight? I, and I'm glad it's coming from you. A lot of people from the outside don't really know basketball, right? Them Twins are really good. Yeah. So, like, like I don't know. I guess sometimes we listen to non-basketball people. We got to stop doing yeah. that. Yeah, I feel like they didn't get credit for the Twins. It was more like, oh, they were there. No. They didn't develop them. They've been there two we, years. We they got developed. I didn't know the Twins before they went to OT. Exactly. So, <laughs> uh, well, I did because I was in that, the college world. But mm -hmm. they are some good players. They was developed right, raised well, and I'm happy to see that they flourish. Yep. Tyler Smith. Yeah. Came from OTE. Tyler was a top ten recruit. Top five. Top five. I Prior saw him at eight, but top five. Just different rankings. Different ranking services. Bad boy, though. Yes. When it, so Tyler Smith, I knew from when I was at USC. Um, I watched him play at Pangos Camp 2021. My son went. Mm -hmm. So I was able to go. I was still at USC. Um, ultra talented. Yep. Had he stayed in high school, he was McDonald's and Hoop Summit yep. and all that stuff. So I'm not surprised. I got to see it before. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is because when he went to OTE, you kind of forgot. He yep. went young. Had he stayed in high school, he would have went to McDonald's and yep. all that stuff. So people will get to see. Um, what he was projected to be, and I'm excited and happy that he came. So tell me about, about his, his game and your plan for yeah. him. My plan for him is he's a, he's a space forward that likes to shoot threes, mm -hmm. but you're 6'10 and a half like Leonard Miller. You got to play in the paint too. Yeah. So my goal for him is you can pop, but you got to roll too. You got to mix it up because any NBA team may want to see you do that for these particular plays. Yeah. And then obviously feet got to get quicker and guard on the perimeter. But other than that, he's a good listener comes to work every day, and his jumper is wet. Yeah, he was fourth in OTE in three-point shooting his first year. I, bl I believe it. And so, yeah, he definitely can space the floor. Yep. But I, I was glad for him to basically reintroduce himself to the world. In no a question. Sense. Yeah, because sometimes people forget. But Tyler Smith is a bad boy, man. He's an NBA basketball player. And watch, as the season go along, um, he's going to continue to get better and better. He's going to have some big games, for sure. All right, Baba Carr. Ooh. Now, he's a guy that a lot of people don't know about. Now, I don't know what position he plays. Right. Because he's built like a four. Yep. He likes to play in the post. Yep. He had, what, he have like an 18-rebound game? Yep. In January? Yep. But then he can shoot. He's kind of come out of nowhere. So tell me about his journey from when you first got him to where he's at now. So when he came over here, he was really raw. And that's not just the skill set, but that's the understanding of the game. Um, being a Ignite for the two-year program, you learn more. Your curve is, is, is a little bit smaller because you got time to develop. But Baba is a physical forward, yep. right? That's strong enough to guard fives, but quick enough to stay in front of ones and twos. And so he, his position is, and I tell all our players is, when NBA teams ask you, whatever you need me to be, yep. right? Because that, that means I could join any team. But yep. he's six. Hey, I told you, Baba, six what? How much you weigh? Uh, 232. 232, 6'7". Tank, solid. Tank, yeah, and he's our, one of our most athletic players on the team. So now he's just coming into his own. NBA team seen him last year, but when you're somewhere for two years, you got to develop and get better, and he yep. showed that. And he's been doing that since the practice. I don't know if you came to our first practice, but he showed out then. So the game, I wasn't surprised. All I kept hearing about, he was the best player at that practice. Wow, so, man, and I'm so proud of him because, um, you know, sometimes you feel like people, you know, 
don't see me or don't hear me, but this has been building. Mm -hmm. um, this is our first off-season at Ignite. It's our first time we had off-season. So he was in the gym with me every day, May and June. He went home in July, and he came back in August. So these dudes been grinding every day. All right, Terry. He is someone that I, I had a chance to watch in person last year at Basketball Out Borders. Yeah. And unfortunately, he had a gruesome injury. Yeah. And one of the things I like about him is that just seeing him move around here, his spirits are just high. He's yeah. like this innocent kid that's very polite, having fun, but he competes. He, he plays. So tell me about his game or tell the audience about his game that don't so know So Cherry him. is from, uh, he's played from the NBA Africa Academy. Mm -hmm. Um, he was a player who's highly regarded, hurt his foot at Basketball Without Borders. So um, he's healthy now, but we're just um, being extra precautious with yeah. him. Um, now to his game. He's a 6'7 and a half, 205 pound guard. He's a guard. And when I say guard, it's a difference. Wings wait for the ball. He distributes. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things that he has to get better at, he turned the ball over a lot when he was in high school. Yeah. And so now um, I'm going to hold him accountable. He's playing with better players, so he know he got to tighten it up. But far as his skill set, people are going to laugh at this, but I kind of compare him to like a Jamal Crawford. He got a filthy, filthy, like New York Jamal Crawford style handle. And so um, I didn't know that. I did not know that, man. But putting him in skill work and seeing his handle is very nasty. Got good size. Now what he got to do is uh, become a defender, a la Dyson Daniels. Since he is 6'7", he can play 1, 2, 3, 4. And so defensively is where he's going to have to make a big adjustment. But um, that's another weapon that we have, and I can't wait till he, yeah, <laughs> he like, come out. And I got oh, you go, okay, I got one more that you're going to say last probably. Yeah, so when I, when I saw him play, when I watched his film, the turnovers didn't scare me. Right. Because I'm like, he sees it. Yeah, he does like see sometimes, it. Right. You know, sometimes he forces things, yep. but you can't really teach what, what he sees. Yeah. But yeah, man, I, I didn't I didn't see the Jamal Crawford, Ooh. but I do see like a big combo point. Cause remember when Jamal came into the league, they thought he was yeah, thought same he was thing. a one. And so Jamal just finally said, "Oh, say I can run the point, but let me score. Yep. Let me do me." And so that's what I was trying to want to get through him. Don't worry about positions, just get on the court. And you know, a lot of times when when people go to Africa to scout, they're looking for bigs. They're looking for the seven footer, but you don't really see people take time to develop African wings. You're right. I think that's the next step that can really change the game. And for him, for him to play like the way he plays, I mean, that's crazy unique. Well, and, and he got good veterans. John Jenkins, Mika, Pargo. See, those guys help too. Yep. Like, it makes my job easy. And so that's going to take his uh, his talent to another level because they're holding him accountable too. Yep. Telling him what is his do's and don'ts. But I'm excited. I can't wait till he get back. There's Cherry right here. Cherry, what's up? Say hello. Oh, oh you see me? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> that's that's the, the bubbly personality we were right. talking about. Right. All right, last, Dink. Yeah. Dink is another player that's going to, he's going to be here for two years. Yeah. And actually, I forgot about London. Oh, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to get in London, too. And, and Dink is, I live in Dallas. Yeah. And he, he's a point guard. A yeah. A six-eight point guard. No and question. I know for you as a point guard, yep. this is like, I mean, this is like your, your baby. And no question. Like, this is someone that you can really work and develop. No question. Tell the audience about Dink's game. Dink is a six, seven and a half, pushing six, eight, because he just turned 17 in March. Point just guard out of 17. Dallas. In March, yeah. Point guard out of Dallas. Um, he's, he has very good spirit, energy to himself about the game. And so now for him, it's just learning. Uh, those holes close really fast on passes, so he got to learn when to, when not to. But we're super excited about him. He's the future of our program. And I can't wait till he gets healthy so I can unleash him as well. So before I get to London, how are you going to unleash all of these players? Because usually, even if it's like a top program, like a Kentucky, they don't have seven guys. He had five one year. But he had, yeah, he did have five yep. in the first round. Yep. But you have seven guys yeah. that could be first round picks right. within sure. the next yep. two years. And I know like development is the most important thing with the yeah. night, but I know you want to win too. Yeah, no question. And how do you balance that? So like the, the plan going into is into this year is obviously to play everybody and we will. But we play a 50-game schedule. Yep. We're not trying to tear their bodies up to when, when they get to the draft, they walking on one leg. And so mm -hmm. I, same thing we did with Scoop. Scoop would be 
reaching his max in minutes played for a three-game stretch, you got to sit one or two games. And so that's going to give everybody an opportunity to play. Um, and then the next guy step, has to step up and be ready to play. But we're going to manage everybody's minutes and everybody's body because this is a different level of physicality. It's not college. Yep. And right? that's a perfect so, trend. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. But it's not college. And so we going to make sure that they're, they're healthy and we're going to do right by these guys. And that's a perfect transition to the last player, London. London filled in for Scoot. Yeah. And when I first saw him play, he was – obviously, he was really thin. He yep. looked – Younger than everybody yeah. else, but he averaged ten points a game. Yeah, and I, I feel like he's underrated right now. Yeah, people yeah. aren't really talking about him. He's not getting the same draft love, and even yesterday, statistically, he didn't have like a great game, but he got in the paint. Like he got a lot of paint touches. What are your thoughts on, on London and his development this year? Well, London, I, I will put London up against any college point guard defensively. First mm -hmm. and foremost, East and West's defense is nasty. Second, can't screen them. No, nah. and then second, um. He's coming behind Scoot Henderson. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. So, like, like when you come behind Scoot, it's like when I got traded to uh, Sacramento and I played, I was coming behind Bobby Jackson. I wasn't Bobby Jackson. Mm -hmm. That's tough. So, everybody's looking for that. He was a fan favorite. Right. Yeah. London is a different guard than Scoot. Obviously, it's unfortunate he came behind him and a good thing. But he is who he is. He's a, he's a tough, hard-nosed defender. He can make open threes. And he's getting better at seeing the floor. His role this year is to be different from Scoot. I'm encouraging him to get 15 assists because you got so much talent around you. Yeah. Then once you do that, it's going to really open up for you. But he's definitely under undervalued. But we know um, how good he is. I know how good he is. And that's why I have the ball in his hand. Yeah, and that was one of the things I wanted to see. Was he, was he going to have the ball in his hands a lot? Or was he going to play off the ball? Now he's a point guard. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's going to play their position, with the one they're going to play when they get drafted. Right? Yep. And so that's what you're going to see. I'm not going to put people in positions to make the scouts wonder, hey, he's a two, he's a three, he's, this is what they are. So now they can start pegging you like, ah, okay, if you get drafted by us, this is what we can expect. And so I'm going to put everybody in their position. Well, man, I appreciate this one. My, my brother, interviews my brother, ever. my brother, my brother, man. And I shout out to everybody in Dallas, man. I appreciate the love. And when I come, man, I got to go out to eat with you one time, man. All right, sounds good. Once again, it's Rafael Barlow, Coach Jason Hart. We are out of here.